We mentioned to you guys recently that we had just purchased another Toyota. That's right. And I also mentioned that I think it is the top adventure vehicle to buy used in 2022. A lot of you guys made some good guesses like the uh, Lexus GX470, uh, second generation Toyota Sequoia, uh, GX460, FJ Cruiser, uh, first gen Tundra. We got all sorts of awesome guesses. They were all wrong. <laughs> That's what we bought. <laughs> So let us introduce you to the 2010 Toyota Prius. Now don't worry, the Sequoia is not going anywhere. But we did think it was time to add another one to the fleet and there's a few reasons why. Let's get to those. All right, so we'll start with the pros and I'll be honest, the list is not extensive. But the biggest item on the list obviously is gas mileage. This thing is supposed to get about 50 miles to the gallon. Remind me, is it 48 Highway 51 Town? Uh, supposedly. Supposedly. Even if it doesn't get quite that, that's, you know, marginally better than a lifted Sequoia is doing. Um, and we do both work day jobs. We do a lot of commuting. So this was just a really good option for us. And if that's something you're looking for in a daily driver, this might be an awesome option for you as well. Another pro in the favor of the Prius is going to be the cost. These things are not hard to find in good shape and at an affordable price. So we picked this thing up for a very reasonable 5,500 bucks. It does have 211,000 miles on it and we are hoping that it is going to uh, be just as reliable as our other previous high mileage Toyotas that we've owned. So far, I don't have any reason to doubt that it will be anything but that. In fact, it honestly has very relatively few things wrong with it. Uh, really and truly, it's just the paint. So yeah, it definitely has some flaking paint, which is a pretty common issue with this generation Prius. So we're definitely going to probably address this. I've played around with a few ideas, namely one being that we vinyl wrap it in white vinyl, um, but we'll have to figure that one out as we go. Uh, but. It, it seems to be a common and recurring theme on our channel for us to own used Toyotas that are in terms of mechanical shape in good shape, but uh, in terms of their cosmetic condition, maybe not quite as nice, but that's okay. That's not the most important thing. All right, and that about wraps up our list of pros, so let's get to the cons. Number one, it's a Prius. <laughs> That's a pretty a... <laughs> substantial one. Uh, it's got this little badge right here, and it's just a little embarrassing. Yeah, people hate know. you if you have that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's walk around to the front, and I'm going to show you con number two. Um, I don't even think I could fit my head under there very very low approach angle so i i'm just going to be honest with you we're not going to be taking this thing off road sorry to disappoint but sweetheart our audience is going to want us to lift it and put 35s on it that's a good point i should say we don't plan to take it off road but pitch us your best modification ideas in the comments and we'll think about it <laughs> all right our next con is something to consider if you live somewhere like utah and that is that this car is only front wheel drive. If you live in Utah, you're really gonna wanna prioritize it in all wheel drive or a four, four wheel drive. But if you're in a situation like we are and you have one really great capable vehicle, you can probably get away with owning something like this for the days when you really don't need that. Now another con, and this is also probably a pretty obvious one to anybody who knows anything about a Prius and that is this car is not very much fun to drive at all. It is, it's really slow. I have found that if you really dive into the throttle, eventually it'll get to the point where it'll start to give you a little bit more power once the gas engine kicks in. But you can definitely tell that the throttle is mapped in such a way to lend itself towards fuel economy and not fun. Uh, but it makes sense. Nobody buys a Prius to have fun with it. Now it does have a power mode. That's right. And it 
I guess it gives you a marginal improvement. It takes what would feel like a really slow car and makes it feel like a slightly more normal car, but it's still definitely uh, never going to win any races. When we drive over a mountain pass near where we live, I'm not going to lie, you have to give it quite a bit of throttle for it to go up the hill, but it does make it with some authority. And then also one interesting thing about it is that when you uh, tell it to downshift, you can't select individual gears like you can on a lot of modern automatic transmissions, but you can basically tell it to, to use engine braking when going downhill. And I found that it does not hold back very well. It's You definitely have to use a lot of brakes, so it's not an exceptionally good mountain pass sort of car, but that's okay. Like we said, this car has been primarily purchased for us to drive day to day so that it allows us to put a little bit more of our gas budget into the Sequoia for when we do go on adventures. All right, we'll start under the hood here. A 1.8 liter four-cylinder hybrid assisted engine. Uh, yes, 1.8, so a very large engine. <laughs> It does have two wiper blades. Yeah. <laughs> and this is definitely the entry level trim, so it doesn't have any fancy frills or anything. It's, it's very simple, but it does have power mirrors and it does have an aux input, which is really nice because our other two Toyotas don't have that. And it also has an external thermometer, which is nice because our Highlander because it's the entry level trim does not have that. But uh, moving on, the back seat, um, I already have one of the seats folded down here, but as you can see, if I, if I step in right here, I'm sitting behind myself and I'm just under six feet tall and I have plenty of, plenty of leg room actually. It's, it's quite comfortable back here. Um, you know, an Atlas or map pocket. Um, what more do you need? Although you could use some cup holders. There's only like one cup holder in this car and that's a mm -mm. uh, 10 gallon fuel tank, which is pretty small, but with the efficiency of this vehicle, it actually gives you some pretty decent range. Back here, as you can see, there's plenty of space to fit a full size guitar. It does have this little, you know, um, luggage cover thing that sits um, right about there or so but I don't know, we'll probably just take that out permanently. And then if you fold both of the seats down, well then voila, you actually have almost a completely flat space. Um, and yeah, it, it's great. I think if you are on the shorter end of things, you could probably sleep back here pretty comfortably. I know lots of people have done it before. And, uh, and if you're not sleeping back here and you just need to throw, you know, your backpacks and cooking, camping gear, maybe a ground tent, our, our gazelle tent would fit back here, no problem. Snowboard, ski gear, plenty of space for all of that. So it's a pretty small vehicle. And yeah, it's not the most off-road capable vehicle, but it is very functional um, if you don't need those other things, you know, quite as much. All right, I think we need to wrap this up because after all, I did say that I think this is the best adventure vehicle to own in 2022, and I, I still can get behind that statement. Yeah, if you've had your head under a rock and you weren't aware, gas prices are just skyrocketing right now. So the best adventure vehicle is the one you can afford to put gas in. And let's be real, a lot of the really good places are only accessible with four wheel drive, but there are so many places that have a paved road that go all the way to them. Yeah, and another thing this year, we definitely want to do a little bit more backpacking style of camping and adventuring than we have done in the past. And let's be real, 99% of the time you're going on a backpacking trip, you're just gonna be frankly, you know, uh, parking at a paved trailhead, you know, and taking a paved route the entire way to get there and you have no need for the capabilities of the Sequoia or even our Highlander. This will get you there and if you can only, you know, if you can only stomach to spend, you know, 20 bucks on gas, well then this is this is the solution to that problem. 
And on top of that, I don't think it's a bad vehicle from the standpoint of functionality when you're going on an adventure. You know, there's a lot of room in the back of that thing. I've noticed that there's a lot of people on YouTube already that are doing wonderful things with their Priuses. They're, you know, building out a little camper kind of conversion in the back of it. A lot of people will point out that the Prius can uh, rely on just its hybrid battery in order to run the heat or AC while you're camping. And then the engine will just simply kick on when it needs to to replenish the battery. There's a lot of little things that people have done to make adventuring in a Prius uh, really quite feasible. All right, that about wraps it up. I know it might not have been exactly what you were expecting, but honestly, we're really happy about the purchase. We want to know where you want to see us take the Prius or where you want to see the Prius take us. So drop your suggestions in the comments. If you have any questions, please drop those below too. All righty, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. We will now demonstrate the power mode and foot to the floor.